to my host now. My uh, introduction to my host goes through all the menu items and explains uh, how the uh, the package is set up. So introduction to my host. The first part of the class is knowing your roles or permission levels. And again, your permission level indicates what you can see and also what you can do. Uh, the top dog on the whole site is the subscriber. There's only one subscriber in each site, and that is somebody from your community. Uh, perhaps your CAM, uh, perhaps a CAM assistant, perhaps somebody on the board, but there's only one. Uh, that uh, subscriber has the uh, ability to do absolutely anything. And then you have the administrator. You can have unlimited number of administrators. The first one is assigned by the subscriber, and then the administrator can do pretty much whatever the subscriber can do. The administrator is intended to assist the subscriber, so they have to be able to do at least most of the things that the subscriber can do. The administrator, as well as the subscriber, can get heavily involved in elections, so there's a sensitivity there. Leader is uh, usually a board member. Uh, leader does not have uh, complete access during the election, so leader is a safe place for a board member uh, role during an election. Uh, the leader can see everything except election, election results, so a leader can see private information, for instance. The subscriber, administrator, and leader make up what uh, we refer to as leadership. Then you have the standard role or standard permission level, and that's just your, uh, your average member. It's usually a voter, but, but, but it may be an owner. Uh, we, uh, we consider owners and voters to be two different things. Sometimes a person can be an owner and a voter, but it is not necessary. The owner is the one who owns the property, and the voter is the one who can vote for the property. It's not always the same thing. So your standard is the... Uh, membership or role that is considered non-leadership. Now the menu options are set up this way. My account is a menu option. It deals with uh, items that uh, consider me an individual. For instance, uh, that is where I would change my uh, password or my username. That's where I see data about myself. It's all my, 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 and that's where my vote will be. My community deals with the entire community. Uh, it would be things like the, uh, the directory. So as where my account, I see only my directory information. My community, I can see the uh, directory information for the entire community, whatever I'm allowed to see. Reports would be where you'd find your summary information about the entire community. And static meeting reports and other reports. When I say static meeting reports, a meeting report, which it would be like an election uh, or like changing uh, a community document, those are live in a different place. When they're here under reports, it's static. They do not change. You can go back 30 years from now and see the same information with the same voters, whether they live in your community now or not. It's static. It's permanent. CM stands for community maintenance, and that's all of the menu items that can be used by the leadership. That's where we're going to spend most of our time today. Then you have developer. Those are the items used by hosts. Uh, you, won't, you will not have access to that area. You have log off, which is just the way to exit. And you have the help menu option, which is where you will find the user's guide, uh, hopefully, your, Flo your Florida board resolution, I recommend getting it in there under the help menu item, and you'll find the terms and conditions. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get over to my host, to our little test site here, and we're going to log on. I'm going to log on and as an administrator or a um, that subscriber, 
place I'm going to log on so you can see everything, and then I'll tell you what parts uh, the uh, other permission levels can see. Okay, so I'm logged on. Now, the first thing to tell you is that if the system sees you as a voter, in this case, it saw me as a voter, you land on the voting page. So there's no uh, concern about where do I go now or how do I vote. You will land inside the voting page and you'll be able to vote right from here. If you're not a voter, you will land on the notice page, which looks like this. So again, you land on the notice page. If you're not a voter, you land in the voting page if you are a voter. Now, for those of you who have, uh, who have purchased uh, the MyHost package that does more than voting, that is uh, for a self-managed community or for those condos who are uh, becoming compliant with the 2019 changes, you, you folks will always land on the notice page. And that's so that you have, a, you have a way of communicating to all of your members. But if you're using strictly the voting package, you land in the voting area. Okay, so let's start from the left here, my account. My account, we said, was items that deal with me as an individual. So contact information, that is my phone number, uh, where I have my mailing address, uh, my permission level, what properties I own, what properties I can vote for, all about what I own or what information about me. Username and password, that's where I can change my username, change my password. Communication test is a good thing to have. It allows you to say, I'm just not sure I'm linked up right, send me an email. It's just a test so that you know that everything's communicating properly. Online voting consent form is, uh, for Florida, it's a requirement to be compliant with the statutes. You must sign the uh, voting consent form before you're allowed to vote. In other states, this is uh, to indicate that, yes, I want to be an electronic voter, and we keep track of how we're doing, getting the entire community to subscribe to voting online. Votes and general proxy. Again, you won't even see this unless you're a voter. In this case here, I have logged on as the administrator, and I'm also a voter. So that's why I landed in that page. And the last one is electronic transmission form which is where the uh, user can sign saying uh, they're willing to receive official communication via email. Eileen, any questions at this point? No, no questions. Okay, so my account deals with me, my account. Then you get my community, which deals with the entire community. We have a directory, and the directory is optional. And the directory does not allow you to see information that uh, you don't have the privilege to see. For instance, if I'm a, one of the leadership, remember that's the subscriber, the admin, the leader. If I'm a leadership, then when I click on anyone's name, I can see uh, where they live. In this case here, John Brown doesn't have a mailing address in the system. And I can see what properties you own, in this case here, Unit 10, and what properties you can vote for, which is Unit 10 and Unit 24. I can see your permission level and any information about emails or phone numbers. Leadership sees all of this anytime you click on a person's name. If you're a standard user, you will see their mailing address. You'll see their name and mailing address and nothing else. Everything else is considered private. So you will not see the properties they own, the properties they vote for. You will not see the, their permission level, nor their phone numbers, nor their email addresses, unless the individual made their phone number or email address public. You see this little indicator here, this little, this little lock symbol. That indicates that this particular user, John Brown, has not made his email public. So if you're a leadership and you get onto this page here, that lock symbol tells you do not just read off that this information, this is private information, you've got to handle it a little differently. One more thing about the directory, directory is optional. You can have the directory move, removed entirely from your system, 
for your non-leadership, if you like. So my community, I am to deal with the entire community. I've got the directory and I've got notices. Notices are really of uh, very limited value unless you're using something other than our straight voting software. Our voting software does not do much with notices. Our other software that does more uh, would, uh, and in one case, please, for a self-managed community, this is a very important area, and this is a landing page. Most of our clients are voting only, so this is, would not apply. Then you have reports, and we said reports were summary information, static meeting reports, and other reports. So let's start with a summary information. This is a good place to go as soon as you log on to your system. Each time it tells you what's going on with your system. There's a lot of information in here. Uh, it talks about how many users I have, 58, how many voters I have. So I've got, uh, so I've got 11 users who are not voters. Perhaps they're owners, perhaps they're administrative people. And it tells me here how many users have logged on, how many voters have logged on. To the left, the part I skipped over was we have total addresses in the community is 45, but addresses that can vote is 44. That could be a mistake, or it could be that one property has had their voting permission revoked. But this is a very clear thing to look at, and if you want to know what that address is, click on C list, and the address that cannot vote is Unit 2. The fact that this has less addresses that can vote than addresses in the community does not mean this is an error. It just means that, uh, that there's a difference and you may want to look at it to verify if it is correct. Here, addresses that can vote but have no voter. This is pretty normal in Florida. In Florida, uh, if you have an address that's owned by an LLC, then you have to sit and wait for the LLC to give you a voting certificate to identify who can vote for the LLC. Voter TBD is what we use to say we're waiting on a voting certificate. Voter TBD specifically means we don't know who the voter is. In the majority of cases, we're waiting on a certificate. And the other two, should, you should probably never have a lack of owner and here, those voters who have signed the form to opt in for e-voting, this will tell you the address, the percentage of addresses, the number of addresses that, that have opted in. So in this case, 52% of my addresses are covered by electronic voting. That doesn't mean that every voter in the address, it means that there is some voter at 52% of my addresses that has said that they will vote electronically. And by the way, uh, for in 2019, the end of 2019, this was about the average, about 52% was what you, you can expect at, at this point. Below here, we have uh, users who have opted in for email. These are users that have said you can send me email for whatever. Uh, these are uh, this the, the ability to send official communication via email, no paper mail, official communication via email. And down here it tells me that I am the subscriber. This will tell you who the subscriber is. Again, reports can only be gotten to by one of the leadership, subscriber, admin, and leader. Eileen, any questions? No, no questions. Okay, continuing under reports, we have meetings, and again, you're going to see uh, how this is different shortly, but every meeting, these are all the elections, uh, the surveys, anything that was set up to gather a vote, and these are unchangeable. Uh, I have one back here from that back in uh, September of 2019. It doesn't matter if I've changed the uh, community drastically, this report or this vote will not change. So these are static reports dealing with voting. And then under voter activity, you have uh, many other reports just talking about the, uh, the voter. 
And then we, we go to CM. And I'm going I'm to skip this and make this last, community maintenance. This is where you're going to spend most of your time. Let me hop right past it for a moment. Developer is set up just for host. You won't have access to this. Log off, how you exit. And under the help menu item, you're going to find the user's guide. If you like paper, please print this. Uh, we're going to be referring to that a lot as we guide you through the process of uh, creating meetings and votes. You have the terms and conditions in case you want to review those. You've already signed them. And the board resolution, the board resolution is for Florida really only. The board resolution is so important to Florida uh, that you must, re must use dates from that resolution for absolutely every vote that requires a quorum. So whenever you're working with somebody in host, the question to ask you is, what is the date on your resolution? And eventually you're going to forget that perhaps, because this board resolution could have been passed many years ago. So we have a spot here to, to allow you to click on board resolution and put your board resolution here. Put it here so that when you ask that question, you can very easily look it up or we can help you review the resolution and determine the dates that you need for every vote that requires a quorum. Now, I think if there's no questions, we're going to conclude with CM, where most of the work happens. Uh, well, I just I don't have a question, but I do have a clarification. When you talk about you need to have a date for every election, um, I think it's probably uh, good to talk about the fact that it's not date certain, right? So we talk about that in a minute. Oh uh, yes, the, uh, the dates I'm referring to are relative dates. Uh, for instance, your board resolution in Florida may say that uh, you can't opt in for e-voting uh, within one day of the meeting. So again, every time you have a meeting that requires a quorum, you're going to have to set that opt-in deadline for the, the, the date that is one day before the meeting. And you have something similar to opting out. So for all of those meetings that require a quorum and you have something to vote on, you will need to set those dates every single time. And when the meeting's over, then you'll, you'll remove those dates. But it's, it's very common that uh, a person in Florida creating the vote will lose track of what that date is. So if you put your board resolution out here in the system, you'll have it ready for you whenever we ask that question or you, you need to create the actual vote. So now we conclude with where most of the work is going to be, which is under CM, Community Maintenance. This is where leadership is going to be doing really all of their work. So I'm going to go through these, and uh, Eileen is uh, recording this, so you'll be able to go back and look at this. User requests. When a user is having a problem logging on, they can request help. That would be here. Uh, when the user is saying that uh, you have me uh, as voting for this property, but I don't vote for that property, or I vote for another property that's not listed, there's something wrong, or you have my name wrong, all of these are the user making a request to have something changed or to get help. Whenever a request comes in similar to these, the subscriber will receive an email saying there's a user request waiting. That is found right here. Now, the user requests can be handled by uh, the subscriber and, and any admin, and most of them can also be handled by a leader. But in, in the case of an admin or a leader, if the subscriber had not added them to their private email list, you can go here and see if there's any requests. But unless you've been added to the private subscriber email list, you will not get an email saying there's something waiting. Address lists, I'll go ahead and click on this just to show you here. It looks something like this. I've got all zeros, so nobody's waiting for anything. Address list is merely your list of addresses in your community. And they sit here. We have, uh, we have the, the, the vote count for the address, and we have the address itself. Voter list indicates who the voters are. 
here's that address that unit two that had no voters. So it looks like this. So the system says this address cannot vote. In this case here, Lauren Green, I guess from Bonanza, is voting for unit one. And if we have a voter list, we have the same thing for an owner list. And on the list, we have Peter Gunn here, who is the owner of Unit 1. Now, whenever you want to add somebody to the system, for instance, a property is sold, so you want to add a new owner or a new voter, it's best to do it in voter list or owner list. Let me show you what I mean here. If I go to add an owner, I'll be able to search for the, their name and see if, if their name is in here. If the name's not in here, I create a new user. Remember, I'm creating an owner. So I'll put in the first name, I'll put in the last name, and the email address. I'll dictate what level they are, probably standard. But notice here, I'm adding an owner, but I can check this box and make them also a voter. I can check this box. Now I make them an owner, I make them a voter, and I email them an invitation, which gives them a hot link for the site. It gives them a username. It gives them a password. This one page gets pretty much everything done. That happens if you're in adding an owner or adding a voter. One step, everything is done. I say that because we also have create a user. This is strictly creating a user. This person will not be identified as an owner, will not be identified as a voter. Strictly a user who can get an invitation. This would be appropriate for, say, adding another admin or, um, or adding an assistant, somebody who is not an owner or voter. So that was create a new user. Edit permissions. You will not see the subscriber here. You cannot touch the subscriber's permission level. But you can say, uh, I got uh, Arthur, Chester Arthur, and I can say, I want you to be an admin, and, and it's done. Or I want you to be a leader. It's really that easy. I'll put it back to standard. That's where you uh, control permission levels. Email users. Uh, this is going to uh, show up in another class, but if I click this button here, I can send a username and password to anybody who has never logged on. I don't want to affect somebody who's logged on because when you log on, you change your username and password to something that you will remember. We're not going to affect these people. This is bringing in new people. This is something you might want to do every three months. And then we have a new message. And again, we're not trying, we, we realize that you probably have your own messaging system. And this is coming from uh, the subscriber. You have your own messaging system, but we're gonna try to assist you by letting you be able to get to the voters, not the owners, be able to get to voters who have opted in for e-voting. Again, we have that record here. Addresses that have not opted in. And here, Voters who have opted in for e-voting and have not voted. During an election, the voters who have opted in said they want to vote electronically. In most cases, you have not mailed them paper. This is a good email to get to them to say, uh, you know, the vote is going on. You opted in for e-voting. You haven't yet voted. Please log on and submit your votes. So again, this should be uh, enhancing your current messaging system. Owners meetings. Owners meetings is where you would create uh, your your vote. In this case here, pool heater survey was a vote created. It's supposed to conclude on the 31st. It currently has a 22.7% quorum reached. We're going to use quorum one for Florida and for Texas. And the vote is currently open. And there is a general proxy. So here's where you would create the meeting. And you create the meeting prior to creating the vote. So this is 
a live meeting, a live vote. This can change every day, as opposed to the in reports. If I, when I put this meeting into reports, it can never change again. It's, it's going to be static. So that's why when we're through with the meeting, we want to keep a record of what happened. We want to leave this area where it's changeable and put it in reports where it's static. Opt-in, opt-out dates is for Florida only. These are where you would put in the dates, the relative dates for any meeting where you have a vote and there is a quorum required for that meeting. Download data is a wealth of knowledge. There's a bunch of, of data that can be downloaded into an Excel spreadsheet. I won't cover this right now, but there's a lot, lot here. Create voter label data. If you have 50% of your members have opted in for e-voting, that means you only need to mail out the, uh, the envelopes the uh, candidate information sheets and the actual uh, ballots to the addresses that have not opted in. This gives you those the, the address list for that mailing. So you do not have to call this list yourself. Same thing here, address is not opted in for email. If I want to send my first notice to all the members via email, all the members I'm allowed to, this will tell me the mailing list for those who have not said I can send them the official notification via email. I know I'm running through this kind of fast, but uh, hopefully the recording will help you out. Process voter opt-in, opt-out. Should somebody opt in for voting on uh, via paper or opt out via paper, and should you allow it, you can click here and opt them in by clicking the uh, there. Now George Bush has opted in. You can take John Brown. You can opt him out by unclicking that. Uh, we're trying to discourage this. We're trying to allow you to let the system do all of this work for you. But if you react to a piece of paper for opting in or opting out, this is where you tell the system that you received that piece of paper. Same thing for email, opt-in, opt-out. Same thing, works the exact same way. And request user credentials is the fastest, easiest way to help somebody who's having a problem logging on. This gets the, the user credentials to you so that you can provide them over the phone to the user or you can submit a, uh, an email directly to the user curtailing all the issues that they've had trying to log on. And that is everything. Again, just for a summary, my account deals with me, my community, deals with the community, reports, static reports, summary reports, CM, if you're part of leadership for your community, you're going to spend most of your time right here. That's where you get all your work done. Developers for hosts, and help get a copy of that user's guide. It's a wealth of knowledge and page one of that user's guide. I'll make sure it's dated in January of 2020. Page one will tell you how to use the user's guide without having to read almost 200 pages. Uh, if you look at that first page behind the cover page, the title page, you will have instructions about how you only have to read about 15 pages and then use it as a dictionary or an encyclopedia. It's a reference tool for you. And that's all, Eileen. Thank you, Dan. Um, the other thing I'll mention when you talk about the user's guide is we are going to be having a session on navigating the user's guide, and that might be worth your while um, showing up for that <clears throat> course as well. Okay, that is uh, the end of the recording. I mean, the end of the class. I will end the recording in a moment. Uh, I don't see any more questions, so um, with that, I think we'll end the meeting. And please remember to uh, sign up for all these free classes and um, use the link if you need to to schedule a quick Q&A or to, to uh, sign up for the open mic as well. 
Okay. Well, thanks very much, and I hope you have a great day. Take care, and bye-bye.